Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd down here at Advantage One RV today with a little bit of a TLC special. This is a super slide uh, rear living Jayco J feather over here, all aluminum structure. It has had some leaks, it has had some work done to it. As far as I can see, I think it was maybe purchased by someone who either had some DIY skill or maybe purchased by like a fix it and flip it kind of specialist. I think all the things that really needed to be done were done. Is it cosmetically perfect at this stage? No. Does it appear to be functional? Yes. So if what you're looking for is something lower budget that either you want to do some fixing up or some remodeling, this could be a really good fit. If you're looking for a problem-free Hakuna Matata kind of camper, this might not be the one. Now we're gonna make like a couple passes through the RV. First, what I'm gonna do here is show you, do a little CSI for camping, because there's no Carfax for camping. I'm going to show you potential points of concern that I noticed going through this. Uh, I've got, you know, multiple years of experience picking these things out. Like I noticed the entire thing has some very nice matching carpeting. That is certainly not what this was like originally. So there's been some flooring redone. I think I've figured out why. We'll get to that in just a second. But one of the, the first major things I wanted to show you, I noticed it right away as I walked up to the RV, there's been a leak in the front corner of this RV up here. Now you can see it from the inside where that's a little bit ripply right there. If we come down a little bit, this is all still solid. So whatever happened, it was localized into that front corner. And I suppose, thankfully, you can kind of close the door and just sort of get it out of the way. When we go outside, though, you will see how it did affect uh, the front corner of this RV a little bit more on the outside. Now, interestingly, the opposite corner and the rear corners, they all look like they've held very nicely, which is good. That, you know, it means that, you know, three out of four corners have done their job pretty well. Something I noticed, though, is again, uh, I started asking myself, why was all of the flooring redone? Which made me think there had been a leak somewhere. And when I look at the rear taillight cap on the RV, and then when I see some of the trim stuff down here, it, it makes me think that there had been uh, water coming in through the bottom, almost like the rear floor seam. That being said, I've walked all over this. I haven't found, there's not soft spots on the floor. The floor is still very solid. So uh, whatever it was, it was caught pretty quickly, but it probably, and I'm theorizing here because I don't know what's below the carpet, but it probably left a color stain on the floor where it got wet. And that's where somebody went through and recarpeted the entire RV. Now, I also noticed you might see the little pools of adhesive, basically. Um, that's kind of what we're looking at right here. Uh, that looks like I think came in from the windows and I don't know we got some nasty weather last night we had a tornado actually touched down not too far from this facility it is possible that just some rain blew through there but some of that looks a little dried out but when I look at the RV's uh, window from the outside I don't see where there's any leaks or seam failures there so I'm wondering if just a window didn't get totally shut and it rained sometime and I get that those are some pretty significant points of concern kind of areas for some folks, but the thing is, looking past that and acknowledging that they're significant, but remembering that those are also helping reduce the price tag for you, there's a lot of good. There's a lot of good going on in this RV. And I think that if you're maybe a first-time RV owner, you're just wanting to dip your toes in the pond, or if you're looking for like a buddy hunting shack or something like that, this is a more budget-friendly way to either get started or to minimize your cost of getting into an RV. Maybe something you use for maybe just a season or half a season to see if it works for you and then flip out of it. Because RVs like this, they tend to stay at a pretty consistent value as long as nothing really gets any worse. So if you're fairly handy and you're thinking of getting into camping, this might be a good way to go. If you're not very handy, like me, this might not be your best first-timers RV right here, but... If you're a little bit skilled and you're understanding what you're getting here, there's a lot of life left on these bones. Because this is a very popular layout, a nice traditional rear living room. You could have uh, a couple chairs in the back. It looks like, uh, I, I don't think that is the original factory chair back there. Maybe it is. I, I'm not certain. Someone put a little piece of cardboard under the little thing there so that maybe there wasn't, I don't know, some oil or something getting onto the carpet. I'm not exactly sure what that is about. But again, the carpeting was all, the work that's been done on this RV has been done very well. The carpet's been done very nicely through the slide floor, through the main floor. All that's been done very well. I, 
I missed this my first pass through. I think there may have been uh, some kind of seam failure, a little bit of a leak around the air conditioner gasket at one point. I think that's what this is right here. I think that that's where it's been cleaned off, but it could also just be where some air with some dirt and debris was kind of blowing out from that little gap that was uh, right there. I'm not sure which one that might be, but this is all solid right there. So I don't think it's uh, like an issue that where like it got wet and rotted out or anything like that. The, lots of windows in this model too. And for a smaller, lighter RV, 5,580 pounds, I think it was, it's got a pretty decent feel. This over here would have traditionally been a sofa and a dinette super slide. And you can see how the furniture has been pulled around and changed. And that's again, if you're looking for something to customize, a little bit of a DIY special, a TLC special RV like this is not a bad way to go. I think that's actually a motorhome hide-to-bed sleeper sofa because that does open up into a sleeper and that's a flex steel sofa. That is uh, absolutely hands down a higher grade sofa than was in here originally new from the factory. I'm not sure. Maybe that's a, maybe a yoga mat. Maybe that's what this was used for over here. A little mobile yoga studio, something like that. Not sure. That table over there can be moved around. I think they probably pulled that in front of the sofa when they needed it for a little bit of Dinofa action. This is a traditional, uh, you know, old style TV kind of entertainment center here. The air is centralized. Um, by the way, that'll all go through the ceiling vents. The kitchen's a little bit minimal, but I do like that countertop extension that you have right there. Now, one of the things that's at a little bit of a tricky angle for me to try to show you here is here in the hallway, this has an open up right across from the bathroom, a large additional kind of closet space right here, which is very handy. Now, down below that, these would be like some of our systems, like our water heater, furnace, uh, items of that nature. Flipping around the other direction, uh, on the opposite side of the hallway, as it were, we have our master bathroom over here, that little cutaway right there. Very nice if you're a little bit thicker or fluffier, you know, you need the extra shoulder, hip, and or elbow room. Um, the uh, shower surround paneling, I don't see any issues around the shower or the skylight or anything like that. Another nice thing I noticed is that up here, this has one of those extra large kind of ceiling vent fans to get some better airflow going. And backing up just a step here, that closet was on the left, the bathroom on the right. I believe there's a common misheard Credence Clearwater Revival uh, lyric discussing a bathroom on the right. <laughs> Oh, uh, I think uh, I, like many people for a number of years, uh, said that lyric incorrectly so many times it's not even funny. This is interesting. Kind of a classic way a lot of RV brands used to do this. Your side stands were way up top above the bed line, and they put some household outlets up there. I don't know, for maybe lights or fans or something like that. This is a, a short queen, a camp queen, by the way. But you see, you can walk around it. You could sacrifice some of that walk around space if you wanted to go to a longer true queen. Uh, you know, were that your preference. One of the really nice things about this floor plan, though, is that with the slide closed, you can actually slip right through it. Like, you've got two entry doors, so whether you come in from the bathroom, or from the bathroom, nope, sorry, come in from the bedroom, you can hit the bathroom, you can pass through, we can get to the kitchen, you can get to all kinds of stuff. So it does have what I like to call, it, it passes the cracker barrel test. If you can't deploy the slide, but you got to get in it. Now, a couple things I've noticed. I think originally this would have had 20 pound propane tanks and I see some 30s up front there. Uh, chances are on an RV like this, one of the things I would kind of just throw out there is maybe plan on budgeting some money for some replacement tires. Typically, as long as the RV rolls down the road, um, a fix it and flip it kind of specialist. And again, I don't know exactly who owned this before uh, we, we it was, it was brought to us for sale here at Advantage One. But a fix it and flip it kind of specials typically won't touch tires. And given the age of the RV, what I'm seeing, I think are the original tires, which means at the very least they would have aged out. Now, again, uh, made no secret about the fact that it had some water inside that front corner there. You can see a little bit of delamination on the front and the uh, driver's side uh, corners. It does look though, like everything that needed it has been resealed. I actually saw a similar kind of thing 
going on here on the baggage door. And the baggage door has a little sponge to it, so I think there's been some water in there. Unfortunately, that happened, but once again, not gonna gloss over details like that for you. Although this does have a pretty nice pass-through compartment in it. This was made before J Feathers had enclosed heated underbellies or anything like that. You might notice too, it also rides a little bit lower to the ground versus the new J Feathers. People sometimes wonder, why is that? The short answer is largely because trucks got bigger, so trailers had to follow suit. And kind of similar to that front corner, I think uh, where there had been problems in the past, it does look like they've been addressed out here because I can see some fresh sealant all the way around that rear uh, kind of fixture right here, the, the taillight fixture. That being said, even some of this looks like it is a little suspect right now and could probably use a bit of a touch-up bead. I don't see any issues around that window. Like we saw where the some of the glue from the wall had kind of bled through the window a little bit. I don't see anything around this. I also don't see where maybe this has been resealed. So I don't know if somehow somebody left a window open or if there is an undiagnosed potential seam failure on that window. At the time of this filming, I don't have the answers for you on that. I am trying to do my very best to let you know the physical condition of the RV as I can discern it so that you can make your best uh, you know, educated decisions possible. Now, I get that there's a lot of things on here that are going to scare some folks off. If you at least appreciate the decency and the transparency that we conduct ourselves with down here at Advantage One, do me a favor, hit the like button on the video, subscribe if you haven't, and at the very least, leave me a little comment that says, hey, thanks for shooting me straight, Josh, appreciate that. And if, you know, again, you're the right person for this camper, give us a call, we'll see if we can get the figures worked out for you. Short of that, take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.